What's up, everybody? It's Robert Van Valkenburg at Coke and Dojo in Savannah Park with Andrew Mosdale coming out here to visit from uh, down in St. Augustine, Florida. Very happy to have Andrew. Um, we used to train with Andrew back in the day uh, before he moved down to Florida, and glad to have you out. Thank you, sir. Glad <laughs> yeah. to be out, for sure. Yep. Excited. And uh, Andrew's up here for some art shows. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, a little bit later, but I wanted to just get started by asking you how you got into jujitsu because you've been doing it for a long time, right? With yeah. at a lot of different schools, almost twenty years now. Nice. Uh, yeah, I got started. Uh, I think like everyone, I saw the first uh, first UFC and I saw Boyce Gracie win, and I came from a wrestling background. I was a pretty decent wrestler uh, through junior high and high school, so I kind of a leg up when I started. But I saw Hoist Gracie win that first thing, and he was a lightweight fighting heavier guys, and I was like, all right, I gotta, I, I gotta do what I'm just doing. And that, that was kind of, the, that's what got me into it. And then, after having an interest in it, I was living out in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I uh, met a guy named Alberto Crane, who is, uh, he's either fifth or sixth degree now, under uh, Dracolino, uh, from uh, down in uh, Rio. He, uh, we used to play racquetball together in Santa Fe, and we were chatting one day, and he said, he's oh yeah, I teach jiu-jitsu. He, he was a new brown belt at the time, and I was like, man, I really want to do that. So and that's from that conversation, I think, after seeing Hoist Gracie win that, and then playing racquetball with Alberto Crane, that's how I ended up in the 90s, I think. Yeah. So that's who you started with? Yeah, yeah. I got my blue belt from uh, Alberto. Nice. And then uh, from there, where did you end up? Because you've been kind of all over the place. All over. Uh, trained with uh, Lloyd Irvin um, from blue to purple for, I think, uh, about five years. Uh, then I was back out in New Mexico. Uh, got my uh, brown belt under Tate Fletcher, uh, who was a Ten Planet School. So we're doing a lot of nogi at the time. He's a he's a big guy, about 240 pounds. He was on the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, big, huge monster guy. Now he's a um, he's a stunt stunt man. He gets he gets he's routinely getting beat up by Hollywood uh, people like Ben Affleck and stuff, which is hilarious because he could destroy Ben Affleck. <laughs> Um, got my brown from him and then moved out to California, studied with uh, Bill Cooper and Jeff Glover and all those guys for a number of years, and then back to Maryland where I jumped in with you guys again over at John's school. Um, so I've actually gotten every belt from a different teacher. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. it's an interesting career. Yeah. Um, so, and yeah, you, you got your, your black belt probably, what, three years ago? Yeah. Just a little over three years. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. about the right time frame. Um, yeah, when we were still back in Arnold, uh, down the road here yeah, before yeah. we moved up to Millerville, right? So, um, you moved down to Florida and you've been training at Phil Cardella School, which is a Helsing Gracie school, which is kind of a funny coincidence to you know that uh, Bowie, Matt, and me ended up um, under under Helsin. I remember when I went down to Florida, I was trying to figure out where to train. My grandparents live right down the road from where you guys are. And I remember asking Mike Stewart, like, where should I go down in Florida? And he said, go check out Phil Cardella School. And then I realized that you were, the, that's where you were at and uh, hit you up. And, you know, now it's kind of a nice little visit whenever I go down to see my grandparents to be able to go train with Phil, have lunch with you guys and, you know, uh, and that. So anyway, um, what is it that has made you stick with jujitsu, uh, especially with all your travels and everything? Like a lot of people would would use that as, a, as an excuse to kind of stop, but you've sort of had it be a constant through your, your uh, career. It keeps me sane. Yeah. Uh, honestly, uh, I, I, my girlfriend's always, she gets on me if I, if I don't go train for a while, she says I start acting weird. So I think I might actually be physically addicted to jujitsu. I'm not okay. sure, at least mentally addicted to it. Yeah. And it, it took, it's the only constant in my life. So if I find myself in, in Chicago or New York or something like that, I am, it's in a foreign land for me. I know I can go to jiu-jitsu, and it's, it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. You know, it's something I know, it's something that's, it's like home. It's very, it's a comfortable place, you know. Yeah. yeah. And we were talking a little bit earlier about finding the right school to train at, especially when you're traveling, because the last thing you want to do on the road is go somewhere where they're going to look at you, you're a black belt, and they're going to try to kill you, end up getting hurt by some spazzy, you know, white belt. Yeah. and. Um, so how do you determine which school it is that you want to actually stop in at? Oh boy, uh, I've had 
99% positive experiences there for sure. Uh, I only had one weird situation where I felt like, I don't know what, it had, I was in Texas, and I'm not going to say where because there's a bunch of schools down there, so you, it wouldn't be personal. And the teacher, he put me with one of his really tough students, and the guy came at me like insanely hard, and I was like, all right, I'll match it. You know, I was like, sure. And, and I didn't want to, I didn't know what to do. I was like, this guy's, he's on fire right now. And then after I rolled with him, the teacher wanted to roll with me like really hard. And I was like, all right, this, this guy is another black belt. It's like coming at me like, like what is he trying to do? Like it's here? Abu Dhabi. Yeah, it was yeah. like Abu Dhabi. And I was like, this is pretty weird. Um, and suffice to say, I never went back to that school. But most of the time, everybody's cool. Almost everywhere I've stopped in, I've made friends everywhere. Everyone's just really nice. You know, I come in there with a very laid back, casual attitude. You know, I'm a, like I was telling you before, I'm a middle aged man. <laughs> My testosterone level is pretty low. <laughs> it's very under control. <laughs> I'm there to make friends, learn a few things, maybe have a beer later with yeah. everybody. You know, it's kind of my mojo. Well, so you're, like I said earlier, you're here for, um, for some art shows. You've been doing art for a living for quite a while now. Huh? Yeah, even more than, even longer than jujitsu. Uh, for about 23 years, I think. Yeah. I have an uh, art show in Washington, D.C. next week. And the following week, I have an art show in New York, which is a real big one. I've done that show a number of times. It's uh, very successful, usually. And then I come back for another art show in Bethesda, north side of D.C., then back to Florida. So your main art is photography-based, right? Yeah, I'm kind of a digital surrealist. It's like a mix of uh, mix of photography and digital. So I shoot a whole bunch of photos, and then make these kind of phantasmagorical kind of like scenes that everything's blended together, and it's just very theatrical looking. And they're huge; they're like, like eight foot wide most of the pieces. There, so yeah, or six feet. Six feet is like a smaller one. They're, they're huge pieces. Yeah, yeah, it's it's amazing stuff. Um, so how did you get into uh, doing the photography, especially the way that you do it? I got into photography from skateboarding. There was a time when I wanted to be a professional skateboarder, and that was a short-lived. I, I skated for about 15 years, from 1982 to, I think, 97. And younger kids were getting better than me, so I went back to college, and I was like, right, this is, I was like a brown belt in skateboarding. I never made it to black, you know, it's kind of. Um, but I had, back then, we all had to learn a trade uh, for skating, so there was my friends who built ramps, my friends who did videography and my friends who did pictures and I was one of the guys that was like alright I'll be behind the camera to get uh, sponsorships mm. so we were, we were all taking pictures of, of each other doing tricks and stuff trying to get sponsorships and that's where I first picked up the camera and got into it and then I really found I liked it and I found that I was better at that than I was at skateboarding so uh, I went back to uh, finish college uh, with uh, photography and now it's, that's all I do yeah well and how did you develop I mean your style is very unique to say the least how did you develop that style that's so realistic you know I think I always liked the strange and unusual uh, I used to draw and paint as well but it was always weird stuff I just liked it not not dark like heavy metal but just kind of surreal like Salvador Dali or Tim Burton yeah. or something and I just always liked that and when I was working in the dark room I was always trying to do special effects in the dark room it was a lot of work to try and get something slightly neat and now with what we have with the digital world it can you know, the sky's the limit once you get good at it. It's like, it's like playing a musical instrument in Photoshop. You know, constantly working and creating this little orchestra. You know? Yeah. And picture it almost like the effects processors that Trent Reznor would be using to create his landscape, you know, his soundscapes and stuff like that. It's, yeah, I would yeah. say it's kind of like that. Yeah. But the final result is this one still image. That's a, yeah. 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 So, uh, what are the names of the shows if? Uh, if you if you know so that people can check out it if they want to yeah the uh, one in DC is just the uh, it's called the Alexandria Art Festival that's it down there's a big art district near this huge tornado this, uh, torpedo factory that they gutted and now it's this huge art installation thing but they take over the whole street so there's a bunch of us there there's, there's going to be about probably two to three hundred thousand people there and then the one in New York is called the Armonk Art Festival and it's a uh, Westchester area, which is very wealthy, it's outrageously wealthy. Uh, those are people flying helicopters into New York City for their day job. It's a different world up there, and that's we're right at the IBM headquarters right there. It's a huge, well-supported show by a lot of New York people. And I come back for a 
Bethesda Art Festival, which is, it's good, I like it, um, but there's also, again, another very high rent district. Yeah, artsy yeah. and wealthy. Artsy yeah. and wealthy, which is always good. I've done that show good six for, times now. for yeah. being artsy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah definitely a fun place to be. Yeah. Um, so, well, that's awesome. And if people want to check you out, uh, it's at andrewmosdalephotography.com or just yeah, andrewmosdale? Just andrewmosdale.com. Yeah, andrewmosdale.com. And if you want to uh, come out and check out a class with Andrew, he's going to be here for the next couple weeks, kind of in and out. You know, um, tonight he's going to be teaching at 8 o'clock. Uh, I'm not sure if you've thought about what you want to show tonight or not. Or you're just oh, yeah, play definitely. It by ear. No, I have a whole idea of what I want to show. What do you think it's going to be? Oh, boy. You know, my style is like, you know, I got belts from all these different people, so I'm like a Ronin. Yeah. You know, I have I don't have quite like one master, so my style is it's from all around the country. You know, I pick up things I like from guys who I, basically guys who beat me with stuff. That's what I like. So when someone does something to me, then I'm like, all of a sudden I'm unconscious. I'm like, what? The heck was that? You know, <laughs> that's the stuff I probably I, I pick up and really like. Things that beat me, that's usually what I like. So. I remember uh, Pedro Sauer telling a story about that. It was talking about how the the way that he learned jujitsu was by getting beat by all of the Gracies all the time, and the way that he developed his own style was that after you tap me, then I would ask you, hey, my friend, how did you do that? And then he would learn that, then he'd learn how to counter it, then he would learn how to, how to do it back, and eventually he said, you know, I stole everybody's jujitsu. That's pretty much what I do. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's, it's a good way to learn. I like, I like Pedro Sauer's style, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, awesome. Uh, if you want to come check out Kogan Dojo, we're at 549 Baltimore Annapolis Boulevard in Savannah Park, uh, www.kogandojo.com, or uh, check out Andrew's work at um, andrewmosdale.com. Check him out in D.C. Is it actually Alexandria? It is Alexandria. Yeah, so Alexandria, Virginia uh, this week, and then... Uh, or it next got weekend. pushed. Yeah, it got pushed back because of yeah. the hurricane for next weekend, and then New York, and then Bethesda, um, and stop in check out some classes. Thanks. Thank you. Awesome. Cheers. Good to have you out. Likewise.